is the team of Tedalian Aviation. Every day they risk everything. Alaska's treacherous terrain and wicked weather make this the world's most dangerous place to fly. These are the tales of Alaska's ultimate bush pilots. Tenalian Aviation's main focus is salvage and charter flights, but today there's a lot more at stake. Nephi would have started right here. This is the uh, Prospect Heights trailhead. Anchorage National Guardsman Nephi Soper left on a hike two days ago and never returned. It's pretty urgent. We want to get out there and see if we can find him, help locate him. There's a massive hunt on right now for him. Tenalian's owner, Joel Natwick, and lead pilot, Josiah Freeman, are helping with the search, along with rescue expert, Corey Williams. Altogether, it was a 20-mile hike. He started off at about 7, I think it was like 7 p.m. It was already dark. It was already dark. Corey is very in tune with hiking back in this country and also getting inside the mind of other hikers and what, what they may have, decisions they may have made. I'm 100% sure what he did was he uh, took this trail here. Okay. So he was avoiding all the snow in this area. Nephi was extremely qualified to make this hike. I mean, he was trained, but this is Alaska. I and mean, no matter how much heart, how much knowledge, how much skill you have, this can still take you. What were the weather conditions like the day he went out? We had a big storm right after. Yeah, I remember. The conditions were so bad. 50 knot winds and maybe two miles of visibility at the head of the lake. It was bad. I'm really familiar with the area up there. There's a lot of places you can hike on a trail where you end up with a 2,000 foot drop on the other side of you. And uh, pretty gnarly terrain. Josiah, have you been hiking back in there? Mm-hmm. The snow is melting fast out there. Do you expect there to be stable snow, avalanche possibility? Yeah, when he was going up there, I think there was a high possibility for avalanche. The avalanche is an issue. And with the sun heating the snow during the day and then freezing at night and then heating it, the snow can become unstable and he could have gotten into an avalanche. They didn't find any footprints anywhere near Ship Creek Valley. And this whole area back here is just really deep snow. So if he is anywhere in any of this, he has to be back behind that spot. And the problem today is that the weather, it's nice here, but it's really windy up high. Yeah. Um, we may not be able to get in this coolar. Just depends on the wind. You guys know what to do. Okay. And uh, just good. be careful of the wind with the turbulence. Yeah. Let's not make more problems. Yeah. So go out and take it as best you can and look for him, but if it gets too turbulent, get out of there. Yep. There's urgency to find Nephi, but if we run into turbulence that's just too much, we're not gonna create a couple of fatalities. All right, here we go. Josiah and Corey start their search in Chugach State Park, about 10 miles southeast of Anchorage. The big question, can they find Nephi before it's too late? Hey, Pablo. Hey. So these are your planes? Well, this is two of them. Tenalian's chief pilot, Mark Barker, and flight instructor Pablo Niera are taking to the skies. Man, I a, love I it. I got the Kristen Eagle here, and that's the long easy. Not unusual for a couple of pilots, but this ride's a little different. They're flying in one of Mark's home-built planes. I built both of them. How long did it take you to build this? It took me about three years to finish it up. It's a world-class, unlimited aerobatic machine. Up, down, sideways, anything we can stand, the airplane can do. Mark Barker is really into aviation. is one of those aviation geeks, and he builds his own plane, so I feel privileged to fly with Mark today. On this particular one, the pilot sits in the back. So I'll be sitting in the front? You'll be sitting in the front. I don't trust you to sit in the back <laughs> yet. That's tomorrow. This is the first time in uh, one of those biplanes, and the, that's loops and stuff, so I'm skeptical about this. <laughs> Who's 
thing we're going to do is we're just going to climb up the altitude here. When you're doing aerobatic maneuvers, you want to have a lot of altitude underneath you. You want it space to recover. Yeah, I yeah. want enough room to recover. This is going to be a simple aileron roll. We're going to get a little speed here. And as I pull up, we're just going to send the airplane around in a nice, gentle way, just like this. Whoa. Oh, man, that's cool. Look at that. We're coming out of a roll. Wow. All right. <laughs> we're going to pull up. And we'll push forward and send it around. I don't want to make you sick. <laughs> but you don't want to go back to town without doing one more Elon roll. <laughs> now I'm getting sick. <laughs> this is crazy, Pablo. What are we doing? He's having fun today, but Mark's experienced other flights that weren't so enjoyable. Me and a buddy are in the Super Cub, and I'm trying to teach him how to how to pull gliders. We're up in the air, and the engine kind of goes, burr, burr. and we're going, whoa. Now we're just over the trees off the end of the runway with a glider on the back. And we get about 100, 200 feet above the trees, 300 feet above the trees, and the engine just quit. Vroom. Are you declaring an emergency, sir? Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Go, go. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Bailey now. Alaskan bush pilots face danger on a regular basis. We're up in the air and the engine kind of goes burr, burr. While pulling a glider, Mark had a brush with death. And we're going, whoa, now we're just over the trees off the end of the runway with a glider on the back. And we get about 100, 200 feet above the trees, 300 feet above the trees, and the engine just quit. Vroom. Well, the first thing you do, the engine quits, is you reach down, pop the glider loose. That guy just turned around, and he landed back on the runway. So you're just above the trees. And I told Bob, I said, don't go in the trees. He goes, I'm not going in the trees. Don't go in the trees. I'm not going in the trees. And we're going down together. Both of us look down, and there's a big open field. And this little field is right next to a lake. So he's kind of gliding down. Get down near the ground. And he just starts to level out to start to flare and land. And the engine came back wide open. Wow, shoves us out over the lake and it quit for the last time. Man, as soon as those landing gear hit the water, boom, upside down, the window blew out, full the, filled the cabin with water, and now the thing's going blub, blub, blub down underneath the water. I helped pull Bob out of the thing, and we swam to shore. We get up on the beach, and Bob, the ultimate joker, he looks over at me and kind of goes, well, now what do you want to do? I tell all my folks here at Tanaylan, the number one rule is just land. We don't have to take the risk. We're not rescuing refugees. We don't need to push and push and push and push and push. We're just doing a job. Usually true, but today Tanaylan is flying a rescue mission. The original search took place starting here. Pilot Josiah and rescue expert Corey Williams are scouring the Alaskan landscape for a missing hiker. Where do you want to start? You want to see if we can climb up the ridge where you think you went first? Yeah. Mephi Soper disappeared in Chugach State Park two days ago. Rescue personnel are working night and day, but still no sign of him. I'm a big hiker myself. I understand the area. I understand the, the risks, the dangers. And so, you know, I, I feel like I can relate to him and, and the way that he did things. OK, so this is the trail that he was on here. All right. We're on the right track here, for sure. My hope today is that we can get up there and at least circle around the area that I believe he's in. I'm hoping uh, we can find him today. Every hour that goes by diminishes our chance of getting him back successfully. We've got to get back there. We've got to find him as soon as possible. Okay, I got draft there. Oh, these drops are major. We're at 2,000 feet right now. The higher we climb up here into the mountains, the more 
the wind is affected by the terrain um, as it comes over these peaks and you get more downdrafts and more turbulence. Josiah is smart enough to fly in, poke his nose into it. If it gets too rough, he'll get out of there. But he will try to find E5 if he can. OK, so here we go. These on the left side here, this is our, uh, our peak. OK. I think we can pretty much rule out that he's still stuck up here. Because I'm not seeing anything. No signs. However, I can see where he'd go down on this other side. Right. So right below us here, we have the Willow Out Lakes. One of my fears is that he might have been hiking up in the Willow Out Valley and may have somehow fell into some sort of crevice, which dropped him down into the lake. Cold water robs body heat 32 times faster than cold air. Freezing water kills within 30 minutes. Center weather advisory 106 for all level wind shear and turbulence. There's our turbulence. Wow, yeah, that is a little turbulent. So it'll just be windier and the, and the bumps, the gustiness will be more the higher we get. Whoa. Whoa. That was a very interesting drop. Yep, pretty good wind shear here. Oh yeah, wow. We got about 40 knots of wind on the nose right now. Whoa, okay. It wasn't until we really started getting close to the peaks, getting up close, that it, the, the flight started getting real scary. We're kind of going like this, up and down, and it's just like, I'm thinking, wow, this could be the end for me. I feel like the wind is getting a little crazier here. I think it's a good time to turn around. We're getting some pretty good bumps here, some pretty good wind shear, so. Yeah. It's just no good here, so. Yeah, whoa. We'll just make a turn and head on back out. All righty. Start getting big bumps like that. There's no reason to be there. So while I do want to find him sooner, I'd rather be safe. Well, I really appreciate you guys donating your time to do this. Yep, we'll just keep watching the weather and get a good window. We'll try it again. The nice thing is I'll be able to go back to his family today and at least give him some sort of update, you know? Yeah. Every day that we can't fly is another day that the family has to go uh, without, you know, knowing what happened to him. So I'm hoping that we can get out there sooner rather than later to find him. Corey's coming in this morning. Mm -hmm. The Tenalian crew and rescue expert Corey Williams are hunting for a lost soldier. Nephi Soper was a, uh, a guy that was working out here for the National Guard. One night, he decided to go take a late hike, and uh, it, was a, it was a 20 mile hike through the mountains. But he didn't return um, to, to report into duty. Is anybody on the ground? Yep, they've got ground crews searching. Josiah and Corey went up yesterday looking for him but high winds forced them to turn back. There's some urgency because the weather's changing fast. It's still windy, but it looks like a little break, um, but it's probably not gonna hold, so we're gonna head out right away. Let's we'll see if we can find him. You got good chances here, bud. Yep. So I'm clear for takeoff. Josiah will go and do what he can today to get in there with Corey. But rule number one with all of my pilots, don't crash. We're not gonna push it. So on this trip, I think what I want to do is head straight back into that area where we can uh, see that ridge that I believe he went over. Yeah, OK. They're searching Chugach State Park, just seven miles east of Anchorage. Although close to town, the area has 280 miles of trails reaching deep into Alaska's wilderness. Nephi has a lot of training in cold weather conditions. And that's why I think there's a good chance he's alive. The biggest problem after Nephi went missing was that it was really windy. Flurries would come in and just snow the place out. Yeah, there was no visibility. So what's really hard is even if he did find a place to, you know, hunker down, he had to keep moving. Another thing we need to do is keep our eyes out for footprints. OK. So here we are. We're on the backside of this uh, steep pass that he might have come down. So the biggest problem I'm encountering now is the fact that there's so many black spots. So many spots here that look like they could be legs, they could be arms, they could be just somebody laying in the snow, but it's like there's a rock. That might be a bush. It's hard to tell. So we're looking for a guy who's wearing dark pants and a camouflage uh, jacket. So really, he's matching in with a lot of the rocks out there. So the problem is we need to get down really close, close to the mountain, to be able to look. There's a billion things that could go wrong. There's a big avalanche that ripped out right there below us. 
Oh my gosh. Big avalanche. Oh my god. This area is scary. I'm not gonna lie. In the past decade, 38 people have died in Alaskan avalanches. The most dangerous time of the year? Spring. As everything starts to melt, it's just becoming more and more of a hazard. Oh my god, dude. You know, even though there is a chance that he's stuck in an avalanche, they are survivable. I mean, if you get stuck on the top of it, if you're able to at least pull yourself out of it, I mean, there is a chance that you can climb your way to safety. Oh yeah, it's the real deal. I'm not seeing him though, not in that area. But my heart sinks after I see this because I know now just how bad it can be. No. Uh huh. Hang on, just say, I see something right down there, right down there. Okay. It looks okay. like it's dug out, like somebody might have been there. If we can land here, that'd be perfect. Just if the wind is bad right now, just fighting this big downdraft here. Yeah, I feel it. The wind was swirling, it was going up and down. We didn't really know what was happening. It was like the wind was caught between two saddles around the, that little hill that we were on. Nope, I don't like this. That's scary. Yeah, I gotta pull out of this. Boy, the wind is just so weird here. I've never seen anything like this. It seems like it's spinning all around, swirling. Huge updraft. I don't want to land here. Hang on, just say, I see something right down there. Right down there. Okay. If we can land here, that'd be perfect. While on reconnaissance for a lost hiker in the Chugach Mountains, Boy, the wind is just so weird here. I've never seen anything like this. Josiah and Corey are battered by erratic winds. It seems like it's spinning all around, swirling. It was bad turbulence, and the blades on a, on a rotor craft don't handle turbulence all that well. It makes it rough. Yeah, I don't want to land here. Maybe we'll go to the other side. I'll just circle around it for a minute here. Drop down. I was looking. I think I see a good spot. I'm seeing. So we're coming down, and it is windy. It is really hard. And honestly, I'm kind of shaking. Corey, will you pop your door open and look at my tail rotor and see if it's clear as I land? You're good so far. Okay, okay man. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to shut down right here. It's too windy. Okay. So you can hop out and, and uh, take a look at that. And uh, just stay low and hold on to your hat. Will do. I get out of the helicopter, and right in front of the helicopter, uh, there was a big pile of bear poop. And that was, I mean, it was super fresh. So the bears are out. Um, then I made my way over to the bush, and it was absolutely what I thought. It was the perfect shelter. There was this little spot just underneath that somebody could have easily uh, slept in. I see a good spot, but he's not here. Unfortunately, we didn't find him or any signs of anyone, but you know, that's, we tried. When you think you see something, obviously you get excited. You get your hopes up, but it wasn't him. Yeah, man, it's, it's getting bad out of here. It's getting windy and, and uh, it's coming down right, right in behind us. Let's get out of here. All right. Let's look again tomorrow. Good idea. I am sad that we didn't find Nephi, but you know, uh, I'm not giving up. It's just gonna take more time, that's all. I just hope we can find him before it's too late. It's been seven weeks since Nephi went missing and it's hard now to believe of any positive outcome. When it's one, two, three, four, five, six, ten days, maybe there's a chance, but now there's, it's just been too long, and the state finally called it off and said we're in a recovery mode now. Yeah. It's unforgiving out there, especially he went at night, and then that storm rolled in, and man. If and when the family comes up, I'd like to give him a flight up there. Show him where he was, what yeah. he was doing. Yeah, I would want to know. Yeah. I try to put myself in their shoes. I'm not sure how you deal with it. It's just tough. As the book closes on one chapter, it opens on another. 
20 minutes ago, my daughter had a baby boy, and I'm stuck here working on a helicopter. Congratulations. <laughs> Way to go, Mark. That's awesome. There's her and her husband and the new baby. How cool is that? Quit talking, get to work. <laughs> the Tenalian pilots joke, but for them, nothing is more important than family. I have a friend of mine, and I hopped in this buddy's airplane once, and he had a picture of his family on the dashboard. He said, I always want to remember that this flight right here, this flight right here is the most important flight I will ever take. And that picture helps me remember that. Being a bush pilot is hard on a family because the life of a pilot is you have to cut and run when the job is there or when the need arises. But I know that I can't be stuck in a routine every day just doing same old, same old. I gotta be a bush pilot.